Not I, Rabbi, surely. These words spoken by Judas reveal something very important about his relationship with Jesus. When Jesus reveals to the twelve that one among them is going to betray him, each of them in turn asks, Not I, Lord, surely. And though Judas might seem to be making the same statement, his declaration shows where he stands in relation to who Jesus is. For the other eleven, they have come to believe that Jesus is Lord. But for Judas, Jesus is just rabbi. Note the difference. Not I, Lord, surely. Not I, rabbi, surely. Indeed, the very final word that Judas speaks to Jesus is precisely that word, rabbi. And then he betrays him with the kiss. If Judas had the faith of the other apostles, he would never have betrayed the Lord. But for him, Jesus is not Lord. He is a rabbi, a great rabbi, no doubt. And perhaps he believes him to be the greatest rabbi that ever lived. But he never addresses Jesus in the Gospels with the title Lord. Contrast that with Peter's first encounter with Christ on his boat. Peter declares, Leave me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. And under the movement of the Holy Spirit, Peter declares, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Though the other eleven don't f perhaps fully understand yet the full implications of what it means to call Jesus Lord, they believe it and they declare it. But it seems obvious that Judas does not believe Jesus is who he claims to be. Jesus is Lord is one of the most basic beliefs of our Christian faith. And that claim has implications for every aspect of our lives and our world. We hold that Jesus is the one and only Lord and Saviour, that he is the divine second person of the Trinity come in human flesh, that in the Incarnation God becomes one of us, like us in all things but sin, as St. Paul puts it. He, as Lord, holds all power, authority and sovereignty over all of creation and over every single soul, whether they know it or not, whether they like it or not. But in our day and age, there seems to be amongst many, some Christians included, a great doubt in, if not outright rejection of, Christ's divinity. Too often, he is spoken of as a great human being, maybe even the greatest human being, a great teacher, moral guide, inspirational leader, and every other sort of accolade is afforded him. But while he may well be all of that, that is not all he is. First and foremost, he is Lord. If we Christians forget, downplay or reject that truth, that Jesus is Lord, then we have torn the very heart out of our faith. Because if Jesus is not Lord, if he is not divine, then a really innocent, good and holy man died on the cross. But that wouldn't have been enough to repair the damage done by sin. It wouldn't have been enough because the distance between mankind and God caused by sin was unbridgeable by a mere human's greatest efforts. That human had to also be God in order for that sacrifice on the cross to be all-encompassing, limitless and infinite in its value. Jesus is Lord. He is fully God and fully man. He's not a demigod, half man and half God. He is both God and man, fully. If we reduce him to merely being the greatest man who ever lived 
and neglect to focus on the fact that he is God, then we have a seriously impoverished understanding of our faith. And whether we know it or not, we kind of have abandoned the Christian faith. If Jesus is not God, then he is not the Lord. And if he is not man, then he is not the Christ. But we hold firmly to the truth that he is the Lord Jesus Christ. It seems clear from the Gospels that Judas does not believe that Jesus is Lord, nor even the Christ. Hence, he always calls him Rabbi. The Gospels clearly tell us that some of Jesus' wider family circle thought that he was mad, and that the Pharisees, seeing him filled with immense power and authority, decided he was bad, for they said it was by the power and influence of Beelzebul that he worked his miracles. But a few of his closest friends understood that he was neither mad nor bad, but that he was the Lord. Now, we have no evidence that Judas thought that Jesus was mad or bad, but it is very clear from the scriptures that he did not acknowledge him to be the Lord. And so, for 30 pieces of silver, he was willing to betray Jesus, because for him, he was not the Lord. Had he believed, he would undoubtedly have acted very differently. And what about us? Do we have a price? What will it take for us to throw off the yoke of Christ's lordship. There are many voices, movements and ideologies in today's world which would seek to lure us away from living under the lordship of Christ. And most of those are not asking us to publicly proclaim that Jesus is not Lord. They just want us to not publicly proclaim him at all. Or they are quite content that we might believe that Jesus is Lord, but want us to live our lives as if he weren't the Lord. Additionally, these non-Christian and sometimes anti-Christian influences and influencers want us to give up sharing the gospel and want to convince us that we should just accept that the Lord's teaching His example and the Christian way of life he sets before us is not something that modern society should have to accept or even tolerate, much less submit to. To the Jewish people of God, from the very first preaching of of Peter at Pentecost, the church proclaimed, Jesus is Lord. That was probably one of the hardest things for them to believe. To the pagan Roman Empire, where often the proclamation was, Caesar is Lord, the church boldly challenged the established order, declaring that Jesus, and Jesus alone, Jesus Christ, is Lord. We are Christians, and our cry must always be, Jesus is Lord. No political movement or personality is Lord. Jesus is Lord. He alone has the power to save us. Jesus is Lord above all, over all, in all. And firmly believing that will cause us to live differently and make different choices and so have a vastly different outcome to our lives. If Judas had believed that, how different things might have turned out for him. To have Jesus as our inspiration in how we live will take us some distance in this life. And many do have him as that, an inspirational figure. But to declare him as Lord and to submit to his dominion, authority and power 
Well, that will take us all the way to heaven.